my brothers and my sisters, I greet you this morning as part of our new norm, a new sense of normalcy in increasing our digital footprint. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. It is now preaching time. Now this is the first time for me. This certainly is not the first time I've preached a sermon, but this is the first time I've preached one sitting down, and this is the first time I've preached one from my living room. So it's new for both of us, but the same God who's been good to us over the years is the same God who's good to us right now and the same God who will be good to us for years and years and years to come. So in the midst of our circumstance, I ask you to come with me for just a moment before the Lord and ask for God's blessing. Precious and wonderful God, hallowed be your name. God, we come before you in a strange new land, a strange new set of circumstances, but recognizing that you are the same God today as you were yesterday, and the same God who will be the God of love forever. I ask you now, dear God, to bless me in this new mode of preaching. I pray, dear God, that you will bless the words that are shared, and I pray, dear God, you will bless the hearts that receive them. I pray, dear God, that people will find encouragement and I pray, dear God, that you will continue to be a blessing as only you can. These are all the blessings we ask now in the perfect and precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I encourage you, please, to join me in Psalm 137. Psalm 137, a very popular psalm, but one that is not frequently preached. Psalm 137. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Listen to the words of the Lord. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, on the willows we hung up our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, meaning they asked for joy or frivolity, saying, Sing us songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If we forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My brothers and my sisters, I want to talk with you for just a few moments this morning from the topic, praising God in a strange new land. Praising God in a strange new land. Now, I'm coming to you live from the bayou. I'm in my home state of Louisiana as the COVID-19 pandemic is distressing communities all across the United States of America. I am so thankful for the caring admonition I received from the members of our church at St. Joseph's specially called church conference slash official board meeting where individuals insisted that I go home to be with my family. I was actually so touched by the church's sentiment that I told one of my line brothers, Kevin Monroe, how moved I was. Now Kevin responded by saying, that's good. Because if something goes on, you need to be in a space where you're not trying to figure stuff out. You need to be home where you know where stuff is. Down there on the bayou, if push comes to shove and you got to get something to eat, Kevin said you know where all of the catfish and the crawfish try to hang out in the local pond. Now Kevin's point of reference was that in the midst of a situation, it's good to be in familiar surroundings. And as much as I understood Kevin's logic, the truth of the matter is that I am not in a familiar situation. In fact, I'm in a strange new land. 
I'm in a place where my daily routine has been so interrupted that I'm attempting to adjust to new norms. I'm in a place where watching the news has become so depressing, partially because of the incompetence and belligerence I see in Washington. I'm in a place where I see people who I grew up with in New Orleans that are dealing with rapidly increasing numbers of sickness, hospitalization, and even death. I'm in a place where even when I tune into social media with the expectation that I have a pleasant diversion from all of the drama, I see college classmates who are in New York and they're crying out for prayers because the emotional toll of everything is just too much to bear. They too are living in a strange new land. The fact of the matter is, whether you're down here in South Louisiana or up on the East Coast in New York, whether you're tuning in from Durham, North Carolina, or anywhere else in the world, we all are dealing with new realities and we all are adjusting to new norms as we all are now living in a strange new land. Right now, in late March and early April, I would be typically in a place of extreme happiness. This would be a time of fun and frolic for me as I was getting ready for the Final Four if I was watching the NCAA. It would be a time for baseball's opening day optimism if I was watching MLB. And it would be a time where I'd be tuned into the playoffs if I was watching the NBA. Instead, so many of us only have memories of what was in the past because we are now no longer watching sports. Students are no longer graduating. We're not going on vacation because we're not even going to work. That means many of us are fighting off depression because the coronavirus has changed our entire way of life and everything around us and all of us are living in a strange new land. The question, though, I raise for you this morning, as we enter a space of worship and as we seek to worship our God in spite of our circumstances, is how do we praise God in a strange new land? This isn't the first time that people of faith have been taken from that which was familiar and placed into that which was unfamiliar. Just as we are doing all we can to hold on to our faith, our brother Jeremiah did all he could to hold on to his faith too. While we were in the midst of a pandemic, Jeremiah wrote this text while in the Babylonian exile. When we look at the text now, we can find spiritual inspiration in the first six verses of Psalm 137. Last week, as we looked at Psalm 27 and talked from the topic, Tough Times Never Last, I mentioned that many of the Psalms, including Psalm 27, are attributed to David. With respect to Psalm 137, however, its attribution is to Jeremiah. Insofar as David is believed to have written Psalm 27 while hiding from Saul and living in a cave, Jeremiah supposedly wrote Psalm 137 after his beloved Jerusalem was destroyed and its faithful people were being oppressed during the Babylonian exile. It's in these first six verses that Jeremiah assures us whether you're like David and you're fleeing from an unseen enemy or whether you're like him living in a strange new land or perhaps like each and every one of us today combating the coronavirus, no matter what your circumstances look like, there's always reason to give God's praise when you think about God's love and the way God can get you through any situation. Now, in looking at this text, these first six verses of Psalm 137, this text moves in three parts, and consequently, I want to share with you three brief points that prayerfully bring encouragement as we all are living in a strange new land. The first point is this, cry out to God when you are in the midst of despair. When we look at the text, we see Jeremiah issues a cry for help 
as people are in the midst of despair. As the Hebrew children were being persecuted in Babylon, Jeremiah writes in verses 1 and 2, By the rivers of Babylon, likely the canals that were connecting the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, there we sat down and wept, meaning they cried out. Jeremiah also says that on the willows or on the trees there by the banks of the river, they hung up their harps, meaning as part of their weeping, they didn't feel like they had any reason to give God any praise. That lets us know that if Jeremiah was here with us today, things would have gotten so bad that with the coronavirus wreaking so much despair, he wouldn't have any intention of making any music. All he could do is cry out. Now everybody ought to be able to identify with this first move in the text because by now every person of faith and every person who has compassion in their heart ought to want to cry out. Everybody tuning into this message is under some sort of stay-at-home order. Everybody has been seen or everybody has seen people so adversely affected by COVID-19 that even if you have not personally been hit, Knowing that there are makeshift morgues in Italy, knowing that there are inadequate hospital facilities in New York, and knowing that we have a president who decides that rather than sending aid to people who are hurting in Detroit, he'd rather pick a partisan fight with a Democratic governor of Michigan, that ought to make you want to cry out. All of us here are being pushed to the proverbial banks of our own version of the rivers by Babylon because all of us have been pushed to a place where all we can do is cry out to God for help. The first point of this text is when things get so bad, cry out. The second move in this text we see comes in verse 3. It lets us know a hard, cold truth. Things sometimes get worse before they get any better. When we look at the text in verse 3, Jeremiah writes, Our captors asked us for songs. Meaning, it wasn't bad enough to be under persecution, but the persecutors started to torment us. They started to make fun of us. They took things from bad to worse by asking us to sing a song of our Zion. In other words, Jeremiah's captors are tormenting him by saying, watch this. You sang praises to God when you were watching March Madness. You sang praises to God on opening day of Major League Baseball, and you would be singing praises to God if you were getting ready to watch the NBA Finals. Let's see you praise God now as you're in the midst of dealing with a coronavirus pandemic. Now, all of us here know what it's like when a situation moves from bad to worse before it gets any better, because the truth of the matter is we all are dealing with that exact situation right now. I saw a Facebook post that said, you wanted a reality TV show host for a president. Welcome to Survivor. 45 told the country this thing is really not that bad and the warm weather's going to come and it will miraculously go away. 45 also said it's not that bad and we're going to have a vaccination for it in just a couple of weeks. On the other hand, Dr. Anthony Fauci followed up and said this thing is bad and it's going to take at least 18 months for us to develop any sort of vaccination and things actually will get much worse before they get any better. Oh, if things are going to get much worse before they get any better, that means we have got to be more vigilant by staying at home because doing so can save lives. If things are going to get worse before they get any better, that means it's up to us as a church family and as a church community to look after our seniors because they are depending on us. And if things are going to get worse before they get any better, the last thing we should do is start fighting against one another. Our common enemy is a pandemic and will take all of us working together 
and praying together to defeat her and to see our church through. Remember the topic from last week's preaching moment, tough times never last. The third and the final point I want to address this morning really answers the question of how can we praise God in this strange new land? And the third point is this, remember God's goodness in your life. Remember God's mercy and remember all the things God has already brought you through. And looking at this text and looking at verse four, Jeremiah raises the question right after things move from bad to worse, how can we sing the Lord's praise or how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How can I praise God in the midst of my situation? How can I praise God while living in fear of the coronavirus and while seeing such destruction brought on by COVID-19? How can I praise God when turning on the news makes me feel like I just don't have anything for which to give God praise? It's in this third move that Jeremiah answers the question, how can we praise God while living in this strange new land of COVID-19 where everything seems to have changed for the worse? And when I feel like I'm forced to make a choice between my fear and my faith. Jeremiah tells us in verses five and six with a reminder of all the goodness that was Jerusalem. If we forget about all God has brought us through, if we forget about all that God has done for us in the past, if we forget about all of the goodness that God has already shown in our lives, and if we forget about all God has done for us and the way God has protected or has been protective of us and how God has shown unwavering love in our lives, then we don't deserve to have use of our right hand and we don't deserve to have a tongue or the privilege to speak. Meaning, somebody in the choir once told me, oh, if I had 10,000 tongues to sing, I still wouldn't be able to say thank you. I want to close this morning by inviting each one of us to go to a place of prayer. In addition to my many friends in New Orleans who are wrestling with major issues, in addition to praying for the many first responders around the country, including doctors and nursing room, uh, nurses working in hospitals, and in addition to praying for our students and for our teachers, I'm also praying for you. And I'd ask you, my brothers and sisters, to please also pray for me. Let's pray for each other as we watch God move and we answer the question in our hearts, how can we praise God in this strange new land? We can do so by thinking about God's goodness and believing that God will once again bring us through. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Precious and wonderful God, hallowed be your name. We thank you, God, for the many blessings you have already given. We thank you, God, for all of the goodness of things past. It's because of your goodness, dear God, we come before you now asking for blessings for all of those, dear God, who have been in harm's way and asking for healing, dear God, for all of those who have been adversely affected. Because of what you have already done, we know you are good and wonderful God. We're asking you, dear God, to be the same God, good and wonderful, right now. Please, dear God, allow us to come through this experience giving you praises, recognizing that through all things, you still are God. We ask you, dear God, to allow us to lean not into our own understanding, but instead, dear God, to lean exclusively into you. Bless us. Be with us. Guide us, dear God, through these most difficult times. We love you. We praise you. And in this, in all things, dear God, we find reason to praise you and to say thank you. These and all of the blessings we ask in the perfect and precious name of Jesus. Amen. I love you, I thank God for you, and I thank God for the opportunity to serve St. Joseph Church. Amen.